Welcome back to the Wayward Wags. In this video, we're doing one of our favorite styles of video, and that is our collaboration. Mm -hmm. That's where we team up with some of our other RV YouTube friends, and we talk about the same topic on the same day. And this month, we invited some guests. Yeah. So after you watch this video, make sure you pop over to all these other channels and watch their video and see what their take on today's topic is. And we specifically invited a couple Peyton and Andrea yes. from To Be Determined because their channel has a little difference than all of our channels. So it, it, it makes it a little more diverse yes. this, this month. Yes. So what's the topic? This month's topic is why we chose the type of rig we have, which is a fifth wheel. Obviously. Obviously. <laughs> all right, let's get right into it. All righty. All right, we're going to start with the most important thing to us as to why we picked a fifth wheel over any other kind of RV. Okay. What's the most important thing? Obviously, it's cost. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you have to live within your means. Yeah, so we, what we did was we made a budget, and within that budget, we looked at all different kinds of RVs. Yeah. And to get the most out of what we could afford and what we wanted. And we were comfortable paying that was the right choice for us, was, yeah. was fifth wheel at the time. Because we could have gotten a class A, but it would have had to probably been a gasser. Yeah. I mean, we could have got a really nice travel trailer, but there were certain features and things that we didn't really like about that, which we'll talk about here in a second. Um, class, uh, like the Super Cs, they're way out of our budget. <laughs> yes. We couldn't afford that. That's a pipe dream. <laughs> yeah. And the living space was smaller. So cost, plays a big big factor yeah so for us budget wise fifth wheel was the way to go and the maintenance cost of choosing that good point rig yeah. plays a factor too because it's like with anything most yeah maybe i can afford to purchase <laughs> yeah. it but can i afford to maintain it it's a yeah. whole nother story i can afford the payments on a ferrari <laughs> But if it breaks, it's just going to sit in the garage. That's right. I can't <laughs> afford the tires for a Ferrari. <laughs> so that those were the, the biggest factors for us. Yeah, good point. I think the next biggest factor for us was living space. Yes, I would agree. Because you get more, it's not that you get more square footage in the floor plan. Yeah. But you get that ceiling height. Yeah. Which gives you the illusion that you have a lot more space. A lot of things space. give us the illusion. Yeah. The, yeah. So cost-wise, we were down to, you know, class A, gas, or a travel trailer or a fifth wheel. And out of those three, the fifth wheel gives you way more living space. Yes. You don't feel like trapped. When I walk into a class A or a travel trailer, I, I'm six foot tall. Yeah. So For when you, I'm it's only thing. this far off the ceiling, I feel like I'm cramped. Closed in a little. Even though I have the same amount of square footage. Yeah. So being a taller dude, the headspace is pretty important for me. For you, not for me. I'll fit anywhere. <laughs> She's fun size. <laughs> I'm fun size. <laughs> Pack a punch though. <laughs> yeah, and with the with the Alliance RV, it's a little wider. Yes. Than other fifth wheels too. So that's one of the reasons we went with Alliance fifth wheel instead of any other type of fifth wheel. Exactly. Yeah. Well this next one's gonna sound a little crazy. <laughs> Where are we gonna put our lizard? <laughs> yeah. When we were shopping <laughs> for RVs, we would walk in and literally walk right back out because we couldn't figure out a space to put Scout, our bearded dragon. Yes. So a fifth wheel was the best option. And it, when we looked through all the class A's, the travel trailers, they didn't have as good of a dedicated space that we could use for Scout because we built in his habitat above the TV yes. in both the fifth wheels that we've had now. And we have that extra space on that extra sofa over there to build mm -hmm. his ramps and get up there and he has his heat lamps. He can sit up there all day. So we have a dedicated space for our lizard. It's the lizard lounge. <laughs> <laughs> it's so crazy. <laughs> So one of the reasons we picked our type of RV is because yeah. of a lizard. If you can't accommodate Scout, <laughs> you're not the RV for us. Oh my God. <laughs> All right, what's the next most important thing? The next thing we have to consider is length. Because in this situation, size does matter. Well, yeah, but we're not talking about just the length of the RV. We're talking total about length. total length. With the fifth wheel, we get more maneuverability because part of the RV overhangs the truck. Correct. If you have a Class A, you have the tow vehicle attached to the back and they're buttoned up to each other like this, whereas the fifth wheel overhangs the truck a little bit. Yeah. So you get a little bit more 
bang for your buck yeah. lengthwise. Same with the travel trailer. Travel trailer hooks to the to the bumper of your truck, so your total length is longer. longer. So if someone yeah. had the same length of a travel trailer as we have of a fifth wheel, their total length is going to be long. about four to five feet longer than ours. Correct. Yeah. So if we wanted to keep our total length the same as it is now and go to a travel trailer or a class A, we'd have to go to a shorter RV. Exactly. Yeah, and we don't want to do that. No, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, last for us, but it's still important, mm -hmm. is detachability. Mm -hmm. Detachability is, is pretty much the same for a travel trailer and a fifth wheel. Because yeah. you can detach and you can take your truck to go get it gassed up. Mm -hmm. You don't actually have to take the RV to a gas station. And going back to cost, because in our budget, if we got a Class A, we would have had to get a gasser. Yeah. Then you got to take it through a regular gas station. Yeah. Regular, guys. Regular. <laughs> <laughs> the Brits will appreciate yes, that. They will. <laughs> and even if we could afford the diesel, you still have to take your RV through a gas lane of some kind. Mm -hmm. We wanted to be able to detach. So if we plan our route properly, we never have to take our RV through a gas station. Correct. We can stop, detach, and go gas up yeah. and then come back, hook back up and then be gone. And it's way easier not having to rely on truckers to get out of the way. Yeah, because on those long travel days, especially out west, when we have no choice but to hit truck stops and fuel, it is a good 30 minute delay in travel. Yeah. Because you have to go through the trucker lane. And I can imagine if you had a class A gas, it would be way more difficult. And scary. In our, our lives, it would be scary. Oh, man, I would just dread going to get gas every time. <laughs> yes. I would just, Need I'd a, go fill up gas jugs and bring it back to the RV, man. Need a volume just to get gas. <laughs> yeah. But hey, that's it. We appreciate you watching. Make sure that you pop over and check out these other channels and why they chose the kind of RV that they chose. We'll leave a link in the description to the playlist so you can watch them all. And we'll leave a link in the description to all those channels so that you can go ahead and check out those channels. And thanks again to our special guests, Peyton and Andrea from mm -hmm. To Be Determined. Make sure you pop over there and check out their channel. Hey, stick around for a few seconds because we're going to honor a fallen hero. If you want to get involved with helping us help vets while we're out on the road, everything you need to know is right down in the description of the video. Appreciate you watching. See you next time. Bye.